Hi everyone, this is Alexander Lim and welcome to Author Story, where every episode we speak to various authors and various topics of interest. We have an interesting episode today because the topic is about the future of education. Our guest is Jamie Donnelly, who started out as a math teacher and who has since moved into instructional technology. She provides staff development and training on technology topics to conferences and districts around the United States. And her most recent efforts include the startup of Global Maker Day and the Hunuit Learning Ambassador Program. Okay, uh, she's the author of this week's featured book, Learning Transported, Augmented, Virtual, and Mixed Reality for All Classrooms. And you can check out her book right now by clicking on the Amazon link in the video description below. So Jamie, welcome to Author Story. Thanks for being our guest. Thank you so much, Alex, for having me. You're welcome. So first off, Jamie, uh, let's let's talk about instructional technology. What is it all about? Sure. Um, when I left the classroom, uh, a lot of educators have a requirement to, to consistently learn and grow. And one of those areas that you see regularly needing for growth is technology, the mm -hmm. use of technology in the classroom, mm -hmm. um, more so for the students than it is really for the teachers, although there's lots of benefits for educators as well. Um, and while I was in the classroom, I had the opportunity to move at a district level and start working with educators and supporting them and their usage and inspiring them to want to use that. Mm -hmm. um, actually, since then, um, I, I was in instructional technology in several different districts mm -hmm. and had joined the Hunuit marketing team. So I do their ambassador program, social media, blogging, and um, collaboration at conferences and connections there. So that is a professional development company that works with teachers. Okay, so how long have you been involved in uh, instructional technology? Sure. So instructional technology, um, I want to say even before I was in the role, okay. um, I, I had a desire to share how to use several tools in the classroom. Mm -hmm. I saw how the impact of students, how they responded to utilizing technology in their lessons. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I began sharing really when I was still teaching math with educators regularly. Guess what tool I had? Look at this, check this out. Mm -hmm. um, as an instructional technologist in the district when I was in that role, um, that really focused more on um, implementation and helping to support new initiatives and the new resources that were being rolled out in the district as well as devices that were coming out and usage for students. So it was consistently monitoring, monitoring those things to help educators utilize that technology and, and to have the resources. I think having somebody to go out and find that, bring it back to you, right. as, as opposed to expecting teachers, all teachers to go out and find it for themselves, um, right. you know, that support was there. Right, right. So you've been in this for how long? Uh how many years? Well, now? I've been in education for over 10 years, uh -huh. um, and now I predominantly just work with educators, mm -hmm. um, supporting them in their, we call it ed tech, so mm -hmm. educational technology interest, and uh, really have dived into more of the immersive technology as of, you know, the past, let's say, six years. Mm -hmm. um, and so that, you know, there's various roles. You mentioned Global Maker Day. Yeah. Um, and that is really a transformational process in the classroom, what it, what it should look like in our classroom, as opposed to the sit and get method of, you know, keep taking in information and telling me that information. Right. Uh, now giving our students a chance to explore learning and to be creators of content. Mm -hmm. So uh, lots of different um, things that I do with educators to help support them to transform the classroom. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, got that. Okay, so let's get a little bit into the book. What uh, made you decide to write Learning Transported? Sure, um, you know, I would have never written a book. I'll just tell you that. Okay, um, okay. I taught math and I never in my wildest dreams ever imagined or desired to write a book. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do a lot of presentations on immersive technology under the umbrella of you know, augmented and virtual and mixed reality. Mm -hmm. um, and so going through that, I would have things on my website. I would blog. There was a lot. I, I run a Twitter chat every week and we, you know, explore different, you know, resources. But ultimately what I kept running up against is that people wanted it just black and white, lay it out for me. 
you're here for this hour or for this day of training, mm -hmm. but when you're gone, you're gone. Right. What do I do now? So part of that was also creating a module with who knew it mm -hmm. and having the content and the video content that they can go back to and reference. Another piece of that, of course, is having it all written out with lesson plans. Mm -hmm. So while I didn't ever anticipate going into that, um, ISTE reached out to me at one point and said, you know, would you be interested in collaborating with us about a book on immersive technology? And in my mind, I was thinking I was going to support whoever that author was. What mm -hmm. what can I do to help support them to provide right. those resources? Right. Um, it wasn't until later on in the conversation that I realized, no, they're talking about me as the author and there's okay. no way I'm going to do this. Um, <laughs> and then she said, well, you know, what do you think? Do you want to be the author? And the words, yes, just came out of my mouth. All right. Uh, unexpectedly. But it's been a great journey it, it really has forced me to uh, provide resources that, you know, that make sense in the classroom beyond just the wow and mm -hmm. really something that um, can be used immediately for our classrooms with the tools that they have today. All right. Okay. So let me backtrack a little bit. You mentioned ISTE. What is ISTE and what is it, what's it all about? Sure. ISTE is an organization, um, well, many of us know ISTE as the conference, the annual conference that they host every year. Mm -hmm. However, they're, uh, of course, a much larger organi international organization that works with educational technology and professional development for classrooms. And um, they cover an assortment of different resources out there. But I want to say uh, out of any educational technology conference in the country, mm -hmm. for sure, ISTE is, is the one that um, stands it stands out. It's the largest. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have international. I think that they do a good job at pulling in the international. You have some larger conferences that do things like that um, internationally. But really just it is it is our hub of resources throughout the year and um, definitely during the conference in the summer mm, okay all right cool so getting back to the book you did mention that learning transport is essentially something that uh you know people can get, read in black and white and uh af once you're gone after you speak with them uh you also mentioned it's something correct me if i'm wrong but is this something along the, uh, a lesson plan or is this really like just a uh just, just more like really a, a book that people can read and, and, and pick up and read? That's a great question. So I'm, I'm practical, but okay. I'm also, um, I, I think I, I don't like to do things as the norm. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of like to pull in um, things that haven't been done before and try to come up with ways for me mm -hmm. to keep me engaged and excited about what I'm working on. Right. So doing the same old, same old book. It mm -hmm. was not my interest or desire. Mm -hmm. um, but really, the practicality of it was getting started. What is this? What mm -hmm. is augmented reality? What is virtual mm -hmm. reality? Mm -hmm. What is mixed reality? Mm -hmm. um, then why do you need this? Mm -hmm. You know, what is why? Why even embrace this? What you know, some people ask me, is this just another thing? Is this just another trend right. that will just come and go? Right. Um, and really solidifying the standards. So I pull in ISTE standards, our student standards, mm -hmm. and how it addresses the needs of our students and the importance of them having these resources available to them. Um, and then from there, it went into lesson plans and it went into these engaging tools that people typically aren't aware of. It's things that um, we hear a lot about certain tools like Google Expeditions, mm -hmm. you know, that, that has a great name and, and got a lot of interest and marketing out there. So people make the assumption that that's all that's available. And there's mm. so much more than that. You know, Pokemon Go brought up this awareness of augmented reality. Mm. Um, but our classrooms have so much more available than just Pokemon Go. Right. So while we have these leading technologies that have gained interest and enthusiasm to give people knowledge and, and a concept of what that technology can do, mm -hmm. um, really providing resources that don't just add on to our curriculum, mm -hmm. but provide learning in a way that we could not get without the technology. Mm -hmm. So our students can't go to the moon. Many of our students can't go to the moon, right? right, right so right. what we can do is we can bring them to the moon. Um, mm -hmm. We can allow them to have those experiences, mm -hmm. but we can't do that without this technology. Looking at a piece of paper on a book is not the same as going in in virtual reality and looking around and exploring what that looks like and feels like. And and um, I think that there is 
a very big disconnect for the expectations of our students and their knowledge, um, but not providing that opportunity for them to learn in those experiences. We have lack of funding, we have lack of transportation, location, expertise, you know, um, there's a lot of different things that limit us, mm -hmm. but with immersive technology, we are bridging those gaps mm -hmm. in a way that we could not do without it. All right. Now you mentioned a couple of uh, types of reality. I just, I, can you, I just like uh, to ask for a definition of these terms, uh, you know, for the benefit for, you know, for, for, for us to know exactly what it is you're talking about. What is yep. augmented reality? What is virtual reality and what is mixed reality? Absolutely. Um, oftentimes you hear people interchanging these terms yes, so it doesn't yes. necessarily so it match get, up correctly. Yeah, it's kind of confusing. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and, you know, I'll tell you my definition or I guess the way that I would explain it to educators and looking purely from, you know, what does this look like? So with augmented reality, we talk about Pokemon Go. Mm -hmm. You are seeing your real world through your camera, mm -hmm. um, whether that be through um glasses, whether that be through your phone, um, whatever device you're looking through, you're able to see this augmented reality when you layer a digital piece on top of your real world. Mm -hmm. So um, instead of just seeing my kitchen table when I look through my camera, mm -hmm. I now see a cat on mm -hmm. the table. Now when I move away my device, that cat's not there anymore, but through my device it gives an illusion that something is there and exists. Right. Um, Virtual reality is completely digital. Mm -hmm. So whether that be a real experience, whether that be pretend, whether that be something that has been created digitally, mm -hmm. um, whether it be live, right? We can go live now in 360. Mm -hmm. So virtual reality allows you to look around. You're not in the place that you're actually at. You see none of your real world. Mm -hmm. So when I talked about going to the moon, I'm not mm -hmm. going to see my classroom in that experience. Mm -hmm. I'm only going to be in the, on the moon, mm -hmm. I will only have those uh, views. Mm -hmm. And so being in virtual reality all around you, left, right, up and down, you're able to look around as if you're standing there yourself, whether that be a image, a video, um, again, you know, something that, that is a real experience that was captured with a 360 camera, mm -hmm. or whether that be something that was not real, it was digitally created, like we we're talking about Ready Player One, and, um, you know, something that you go into that was a digital world that you go into. Mm -hmm. um, and then mixed reality, I think, takes the concept of augmented reality, and it really enhances it to the next level that's necessary for us to have these experiences that we need. Mm -hmm. So while I said I saw a cat on the top of my table, mm -hmm. Um, in augmented reality, I can't move around my table and see that cat there unless something is telling it where to stay. Mm -hmm. So often we use trigger images, kind of like um, a barcode or a QR code mm -hmm. to tie that object to that space. Mm -hmm. um, so when your camera sees this barcode or this trigger image, this you know QR code, then it knows where to place it and what to do. So it's just like scanning something at the supermarket. It's going to tell your computer to do this. So it's mm -hmm. going to tell my phone to put this cat there. Um, however, with mixed reality, we don't require that. We don't mm -hmm. require a trigger image of sorts, and we don't have something necessarily just floating around. It's actually identifying our space. So it's um, recognizing where there's a surface, so the floor, mm -hmm. the walls. Um, it is also acknowledging the lighting in the room. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be modified to actually suit more of a realistic view of that cat. Now the cat can jump off the table and onto the floor because oh. it has identified where the table is and where the floor is at. Mm -hmm. So the experiences we also have in mixed reality is extremely interactive, being able to modify and adjust things um, and capture things. So we're gonna see with artificial intelligence moving forward that our hands are going to be our gestures. Mm -hmm. So what we view through our devices is going to be something that is a lot more interactive for us to have. So we're moving in the right direction. That's, And I'll tell you, Alex, I think this is my biggest thing. Mm -hmm. Disruptive technology is often the term that's used with mm -hmm. virtual reality especially. And I think the more disruptive we are, the less we're going to see the masses using it. We need something that works seamlessly in our lives mm -hmm. that is a natural thing for us to include, mm -hmm. not something that we're going to walk around with these big viewers on our head all day long. Right. Um, 
we're going to have to have something that works in our lives and, and enhances what we currently have available to us. Mm -hmm. And that's where I see mixed reality really hitting home because mm -hmm. it's more realistic. Mm. Okay. Okay. Got that. So uh, at present, what's the state of immersive technology today, uh, at least in the United States? Well, there's a lot of money, <laughs> a okay, lot of money okay. going out there. All right. um, I think that's where my interest has been when virtual reality, I started watching the money go there uh, several years ago, and it really was not a discussion in education at all. Mm -hmm. Nobody was talking about that, but I knew right. that if the money is going there from all of the top technology companies, mm -hmm. then we really need to take notice of why that's happening. What mm -hmm. are they seeing? So my interest started there and I started kind of moving into, you know, YouTube, 360 videos, later on came out, was released, and all these pieces started to come together, how mm -hmm. we're interacting live now. Mm -hmm. I go on and do live streams in 360 with my 360 camera that's mm -hmm. connected to my iPhone. Um, so, you know, those types of experiences that we can do and interact in is so much more real. And, and so when we're looking at where that money has been invested and where people have made that investment, um, not just on the company end, but really educationally, um, we're starting to see them invest into international collaboration, right? Mm -hmm. So our classrooms being able to connect across the world um, in a way that they couldn't before. The, the experiences that they can interact with each other now mm -hmm. is engaged into creating and molding items and objects and things together mm -hmm. across the world. Um, so we're, we definitely see that there's a need there, mm -hmm. but people are just getting their feet wet with mm -hmm. what is this? Mm -hmm. um, so on the educational front, I think there's always a catch up. Mm -hmm. You know, education's always behind. Right. But um, there's a lot of us that are very interested in sharing this, adamantly focused on sharing this, that I think the word is getting out more and more. And they just need to know it's a lot easier to implement than they think. Um, so while educators might be behind, certainly we're seeing companies embrace this and their trainings. We're mm -hmm. starting to see them say, hey, you know, I'm paying a lot of money to have this person come out and provide training, whereas I can provide this in virtual reality or augmented reality where they're getting this hands-on training, mm -hmm. repetitive training that they couldn't provide. I have a friend, uh, Dr. Weber mm -hmm. in Alaska, and he is creating or he has created training on um, how to fend off bears, you know, how mm -hmm. to use bear spray. And that's okay. a real problem there. And yeah. Yeah. you can't give a real experience with bears attacking you right. in real life. But I could provide this simulation that you mm -hmm. go through repetitively to where you finally get past the fear of what mm -hmm. you're seeing and get pat and, and start logically thinking about what I need to do, how to now use this bear spray in a way that is effective for my life. Um, right. So there's things like that. We have, oh, I'll tell you one, one other person, Steve Sato is um, in California. He is working with, right now with police officers and school districts and officials to help our classroom educators deal with school shootings mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. traumatic events and how to respond to those situations um, using virtual reality. So mm -hmm. I think that we're seeing the trend moving towards how if not just this is an add-on, this would be great, wow, this is cool, mm -hmm. to we really need to have these trainings without it being a real situation. Mm -hmm. We need to have repetitive trainings like this, and I think that um, we're starting to see that hit home. Okay, I got that. So I guess, I guess, I mean, it's not, it's not, we can't say that it's really widespread yet. It's still like sort of like in the experimental and the acceptance stage more than anything else. Right. I see it in pockets mm -hmm. for sure. Right. Um, it's expanding. People are interested, but uh, yeah, definitely just, just getting started. Okay. Okay. Got that. So, I mean, now let's get on the educational part because I mean, there is, let's face, there's a lot of concern about the standing in the United States. Uh, where education is concerned. I think I remember reading a report uh, that United States was something like number 20 and countries were like Finland, number one, South Korea, number three, in terms of in terms of educational system. How can immersive technology address this concern? You know, I think that the biggest 
role to play with educators and administrators, whether we line up against other countries necessarily or not, mm. is really putting our students' interests at heart. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about immersive technology, this is not about um, how are we going to match up per se, mm -hmm. but why why am I going to limit my students? So if my interest is really for their future and what yeah. skills they need to have, then I would say that why would you not check into this? Why would you not embrace something that you know is part of their future? Mm -hmm. um, and I think once you take that leap, it's scary. Anything mm -hmm. that you implement on uh, technology is there. You're going to experience fear from educators, especially because there's a lot of things that people throw at you on, on the educational front that you that are told, oh, you've got to have this, you got to have this, and then next week it's different. Um, so there's a lot of resistance to embracing it because it, it, is this, you know, is this really going to last? But more so is recognizing um, the skills that our students need to have for their future. Mm -hmm. And when they can put their own fears to side so that our students can be who they need to be for their future, mm -hmm. I think that's when you're going to start seeing this technology really being effective and, and utilized in the way that it should be. Mm -hmm. um, let them take the lead. Mm -hmm. You know, we spend a lot of time being the ones to regulate everything in our classroom. We have to know everything. We have to be the one up at the front. We have to be the one that is taking charge and everybody's going to listen. Whereas really allowing our students to take um, that for themselves to own their learning mm -hmm. is the change that really does need to happen. Let our kids invent what education looks like of the future. Mm -hmm. um, we have obviously failed, <laughs> mm -hmm. all of us, mm -hmm. whatever country we're from, right. we're not necessarily hitting home with what this should look like in the classroom. But our students know what they need and what they want. Let's let them invent what that will look like. Mm -hmm. And I do think that that technology, both immersive technology, any other technology, I think it's going to be a part of what they want and how they, how they live currently and how they're entertained and how they're engaged in, you know, collaboration. So let them take that and run with it. You know, mm -hmm. don't put that on the shoulders of every teacher that they have to know everything. Right, right. Okay. So let me talk a little bit about ISTE, as you mentioned. Um, you, you mentioned it's an organization, right? But does it have like, um, particularly since we're moving to education, development of kids, does ISTE have uh, any standards for students where, when it comes to immersive technology? They do. It was released, I believe, last summer, mm -hmm. um, 2017. And they the standards are fantastic. Um, it could be 2016. I, I'm trying to go off my memory here. Okay. Um, but the student standards um, really address more of our um, holistic student, holistic child, and what they should be receiving, um, what the classroom should look like. And a lot of that does talk about giving them the initiative to, t to own their learning. So allowing them um, to, you know, push those boundaries and opening up the door to what they are capable of doing. Mm -hmm. I, you know, Global Maker Day is a piece of that for me because we very rarely give our students a chance to be the stars. Mm -hmm. um, we spend a lot of time on what they need to do and how they need to do it. If you're going to be the star on the show, I'm going to tell you exactly your script mm -hmm. and exactly what you need to wear and how you need to stand. Mm -hmm. Whereas um, giving our students the opportunity and the platform to run with it. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to see those types of things in the standards that tie back to how they should function, mm -hmm. um, what they need as a student as a whole, and how us as educators need to take a more of a facilitator role mm -hmm. that we're guiding them to instruction as opposed to just sp spewing out a bunch of information right. um, and allowing them to explore their learning. And, um, and you know what? Amaze us. Because mm -hmm. I think that's the biggest piece that I've learned through global collaboration and, and doing different online virtual events mm -hmm. is that our kids are so much more capable than we give them credit for. And we mm -hmm. don't give them the opportunities that they can show us and demonstrate how incredible they are. Mm -hmm. So providing those opportunities, I think, are what you see more so in the standards. But absolutely, there are standards there that I addressed in the book that mm -hmm. um, help tie in how immersive technology connects to that. 
And based on what you tell me, it seems like the role of teacher, uh, a teacher is, uh, I don't think you can call them teachers anymore. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's not like, it's not like the old road, uh, as you mentioned, it's not like the old road system. Right. Uh, so this amazed me, I mean, it occurs to me, how would, how would say, let's call them teachers for now, how would teachers assess and implement, you know, the impact of, uh, how, how students learn then? I mean, today we do it through standardized tests, but how would they do? How might they do so in a in an immersive technology environment? Well, I think a lot of it really stems from instead of just being these consumers of content, to really um, creating their own content. So giving them mm -hmm. the freedom to um, really be producers, mm -hmm. and that is where I think immersive technology takes a huge leap forward for our classrooms because. While I can bring you to the moon, you should be designing that for us. You should be creating the content that we are going to explore and interact with mm -hmm. at the moon. So um, I think that that is, or are you going to bring us somewhere else? Why do we talk about just the moon? You know, right. there's so much more you can give us. And so giving our students the freedom to become creators, and that is a big piece in the book. Um, moving from experience to creation and giving a lot of the tools that I share Mm -hmm. Really, we might start off with the experiences because you need to get a grip and you need to understand. And there's times you have to give them those opportunities for experiences. Mm -hmm. But really going to that next level of allowing our students to be creators of content. And that does take this teacher taking a step back and saying, I'm limited by what I can share with you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you all together collectively and what we can bring together as a whole, mm -hmm. that's where the change is gonna happen. Um, and so that's embracing the fact that our kids are valuable, that their voice matters, mm -hmm. and that they are incredibly talented. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that is something us as teachers have to let go of our ego mm -hmm. and really um, build those relationships with our students and trust them that they are capable of doing some amazing things. So based on what I, I'm hearing right now, it occurs to me that there's going to be a major change. I mean, like, uh, it's not going to be like, you know, like like now there's sort of like a delineation bef between a lecture classroom environment and a laboratory environment. It occurs to me that these things are going to become mixed together. So there's no real del delineation like that. Is that correct? Right. I, you know, I think that um, the shift has already happened. Mm. It just hasn't happened for everybody. Mm. Um, it's certainly an, um, a desire from administrators. Most administrators want to see our classrooms innovative and mm. engaged and interactive. Mm. So you see things like um, Genius Hour. Mm -hmm. So I have a great friend that wrote a book on Genius Hour. She's working on a second one right now. Mm -hmm. But it's a, it's really saying um, passion-based learning. So where, where are kids? What do they want to learn? Mm -hmm. How can that fit in with what we're you know currently allowing them to do? Mm -hmm. When you allow them to embrace their interests, you're going to see their best work. Mm -hmm. So um, giving them those types of opportunities, I think, is happening. It mm -hmm. just doesn't happen across the board for everybody. Mm -hmm. So we're still kind of breaking away from the old system and moving into a new. But, um, you know, blended learning for sure is out there. So we see, we're starting to see even on the K-12 side, you know, higher ed's been like that for a while. Mm -hmm. But on the K-12 side, we're starting to see more of a an approach to where it's online mm -hmm. as well as learning face to face. And mm -hmm. I think that we'll continue to see that grow mm -hmm. as we um, connect and collaborate across the world. All right. Okay. So it occurs to me that, uh, you know, the day of this, like, it occurs to me, like, with immersive technology, the day of the traditional classroom is, uh, is, is ending, or at least it's going to change so much that it's, it'll be different from what we know today. Mm hmm. Right. I um, have connected with a company called Doghead Simulation for the past few years, mm -hmm. and they initially have been focused on the business side, but education has really embraced it to where you're meeting and collaborating and um, grouping up in virtual reality. Mm -hmm. You're having your meetings there. You're able to go through documents together. You have these breakout areas where you can learn and collect, collaborate together and and really start building things together mm. um, and seeing all these spaces no matter where you're at. And you're starting to see this transition um, happening within our um, online classroom mm -hmm. where they're starting to embrace that it doesn't need to just be a flat screen. Mm -hmm. 
but we now can meet up and, and learn in this 360, just like we do. We don't learn in 2D outside of our classroom, mm -hmm. but we're so stuck in that virtually. Um, so really moving more into what is a natural 360 view for us. Mm. Um, so to see, yeah, to see that this is being embraced on various levels to, um, it's just, it's great. I think this is the change that's necessary to continue to learn in the way that we should be learning it. Mm. Okay. Very interesting. Very interesting. So, you know, Jamie, this is a, geez, a very interesting, a very broad topic. And I feel we've only scratched the surface, but you know, time's winding down. So in the last minute or so of this interview, are there any last words of wisdom you'd like to share to inspire our listeners? You know, I think more so than anything else, um, we can be really excited about the wow of immersive technology mm -hmm. because we've all experienced that. Right. Um, we've all went through the, whoa, how is that possible? Mm -hmm. And I love that. And it's led the way and it's provided some great things. But I think more so than anything else, I want teachers to know that these are the tools that we have for today, mm -hmm. not someday not maybe in five years. Mm -hmm. This is something that you can do today. Mm -hmm. And with the tools that we actually have in our classroom, I focus a lot on um, the applications on our mobile devices mm -hmm. and cellular devices. So, you know, really moving from, I that's not for me, that's in the future, mm -hmm. to opening up your mind that, no, that's today, that's what your kids need right now. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's the biggest piece that I want people to get out of that, is that mm -hmm. this is practical, it doesn't take a tech genius to do it. It doesn't take a lot of funding. It's just being aware of what tools and resources are available to you right now. Okay, cool. Got that. So in closing then, the book is Learning Transported, Augmented, Virtual, and Mixed Reality for Our Classrooms. The authors are guests, Jamie Donnelly. And uh, yeah, there. So uh, Jamie, uh, geez, thanks. Thanks lots for being an author story. It's uh, very enlightening, I must say. Thank you so much, Alex. I really appreciate the opportunity. You're welcome. So everyone, I invite you to go ahead and check out Learning Transported. Also, you can subscribe to our channel if you want. So I'll see you next week on our Author Story Weekly Interviews with another exciting author. <laughs>